We are following new developments in that investigation of that Ohio train derailment. Federal and local officials are expecting a live news conference any minute now, and it will be happening in East Palestine. We will be monitoring that and will bring you any news during this hour. Now, residents, they are rightfully hoping to get more answers about the safety of their homes. The Environmental Protection Agency says they have conducted nearly 600 home screenings for reentry. But serious questions about the safety of the water is starting to bubble up. We do not know what testing had taken place when residents of East Palestine were told their water was okay to drink. NBC News has been trying to find out if that declaration was made solely based on samples analyzed by a Norfolk Southern contractor. Listen to this exchange between Ohio's EPA director and our NBC News colleague Jesse Kirsch yesterday. There was a weight of evidence that the municipal water was safe. It is not in the path of the contamination from the derailment. When the governor publicly said the municipal drinking water is safe, at that point, did your department have anything back other than the Norfolk Southern funded data? I, I'm, I apologize, I don't know the exact timeline of when we got the county's preliminary data as well. Hmm. Okay. I clearly have questions. Now, I, I think multiple investigations are frankly needed. The House Oversight Committee has actually started one, but it's looking into Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, and they wrote a letter to the secretary requesting documents and alleging a slow pace in resolving the issue. The letter also said the Department of Transportation's National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, has just stopped short of cementing a cause. Okay, no. The NTSB, it did issue a preliminary report, and we'll get into that in a minute. But how can members of Congress investigate the Transportation Secretary when they don't even know the difference between the Transportation Department and the NTSB? Here's a refresher for the Oversight Committee. The Department of Transportation, or DOT, is part of the executive branch. It is a cabinet-level department. The NTSB it is a separate, independent federal agency charged by Congress, okay, with investigating transportation accidents. And that's what the NTSB started doing right after the derailment. Now I am happy to be joined by the chair of the National Transportation Safety Board, Jennifer Hammondy. Madam Chair, thank you very much for being here today. Before we get into the derailment investigation, uh, what do you make of the House Oversight Committee's letter to Secretary Buttigieg, their obvious confusion about the role of uh, the NTSB? Well, it, was, it certainly was interesting. We are not part of the Department of Transportation. We are an independent agency that's charged by Congress risk with investigating major disasters. Uh, I do think it might be a great opportunity to have them over to the NTSB and walk through our labs and learn all about us and uh, learn about our mission. I'm sure uh, the Congressman Comer is, is watching this, and uh, I, I'm, I hope he takes you up on that offer. Um, let's talk about the report. The initial findings point to what's, what you're saying is an overheated wheel bearing as the cause of the derailment. But that is not the cemented... You're not saying that we, you know for sure that is what caused it. So how close are you to finding the actual cause? Well, that is what caused the derailment. Okay. But You were sure about that? Uh, yes. But what led to the overheated rail bearing, uh, uh, wheel bearing, and why it wasn't detected earlier, and what could have been done to detect it earlier, what maintenance practices, what inspection practices does Norfolk Southern carry out? We have a lot of questions to figure out how we got there. The what is often easy to figure out after uh, any sort of tragedy. It's how we got to that point where such a tragedy occurred and what we need to do to make sure it's prevented in the future. So in terms of the how you, we got to the point of the tragedy in East Palestine, then that final report is not expected for another year. Given the increased media attention here, just the, the public interest in this report, do you all have any plans to speed up that timeline? Yeah, I definitely appreciate that qu question, but we can't, won't sacrifice the accuracy and quality of our investigation. The residents of East Palestine count on that. We have to be absolutely accurate in what we're finding. However, 
We can at any time issue urgent safety recommendations during the investigation to address safety issues. In addition, we work with partners like the U.S. Department of Transportation. Uh, we will work with tank car manufacturers and others who will have access to the facts of our investigation, mm -hmm. and we expect them to take immediate action. So do you have any urgent recommendations given your initial report now that you all are um, deliberating about putting forth? Yeah, great question. We just finished our on-scene portion of the investigation last Wednesday with evaluation of the tank cars and the damage to those tank cars. So now we'll continue through our fact-finding phase. And once that fact-finding phase is completed, we'll move into analysis. But during that time, we're also going to have an investigative field hearing in East Palestine. When is that? Uh, that will be around May. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we'll be watching that. You've been warning about uh, the dangers of misinformation specifically here, saying, quote, anyone speculating about what happened is a tweet you put, we put out, uh, didn't happen or should have happened is misleading a suffering community. Are you still seeing a lot of misinformation out there? I am. And it is so dangerous to have that misleading information because then residents count on that information. And also during our investigation, when we're looking at how to prevent this from reoccurring, mm -hmm. we will issue urgent safety recommendations or and final recommendations. But if people are focused on the wrong solutions, we won't be able to prevent this. Or like this. the politics, because That's you've talked right. a lot about the politics of the situation. Has the politics of this hindered your investigation at all? It hasn't hindered our our investigation, but uh, it's, uh, you know, I don't understand the politics around it. There are over, over a thousand derailments annually. We've never seen this kind of political uh, attention to something like this. And maybe, you know, uh, uh, maybe we need to raise uh, future investigations uh, uh, more in the media so people understand what we're doing and understand the tragedies that people are facing annually. Uh, but I've never seen this kind of attention. Mm. Do you have a message to the members of Congress? Democrats and Republicans. Yeah, I, I'd say, and this is coming from somebody who worked on the Hill for over 14 years, come together and, and address rail safety, but specifically this community, address their needs right now and in the coming months and, and focus on what would prevent it from reoccurring, at least for our portion of the investigation. I do know EPA has... Another mission, CDC has another mission, mm -hmm. but... there's real questions about the water, that's, but... That's right. Come together, though, and prevent this from reoccurring. All right, all right. NTSB Chair Jennifer Hammondy, thank you very, very much for coming in today. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it.